I hope you can hear me without that probably. I don't know because. So in, in brief, uh, first I will introduce myself before going into that. I joined AUTPA in 2013 in November and I was in Ohio, Cincinnati for around 18 years as a CTO in a company and we were doing a lot of research and consultancy to different kind of industry like aerospace and auto industries, material producers, people who have some issues with the production. So means for around 10 years, I was doing all that as an engineer and then I got a lot of funding from the federal government, like close to $6 million once from NIST and then started going up, going up to CTO and then going all over the world, like 25 countries I have visited from all the research point of view and many times I have been keynote speakers and invited speakers in different countries, like India, which is my home country, China, uh, Brazil, uh, Italy. So, so my whole background is in manufacturing, my whole like more than 40 years. So now I'm here and my job is to basically enhance productivity in the young generation here, which I heard more than 46% people are here very young and they need some direction, they need some kind of guidance and there is a lot of resources, but nobody knows a lot about that here, that how you can really grow in the area of manufacturing. It's really, really important, very important. So when I came here, I heard about this rapid response manufacturing center and our dean, Dr. Miguel Gonzalez, he's working on that maybe for more than four or five years to grow it. And you know, a lot of issues, a lot of things come up, but now we are in the position that recently we have acquired around 30,000 square feet space in the industrial park. And we will have that inaugural session soon, maybe next month, means we have not yet decided the dates. But I think it's coming up very fast. And MEDC, STC, they are NAMRI, they all are supporting us. And there are a lot of industries on the Renosa side, like especially Alps, which is very common, and it's an electronic industry. And giving all the products for all the auto industries from you can think about any auto industry, not only Toyota or Honda, but like Mercedes and Volvo, whatever. All the GPS, all the electronics, everything on those modules goes from Alps, which is a Japanese company. And they are supporting us a lot. Means I was in Japan actually two months ago just to visit their industry. And it was amazing what they are doing, like eye-opening for me too. So now the yeah, okay. So you can see here the vision. Vision is to position North America as the world leader in rapid response manufacturing. And the concept is from the whatever you can imagine and then how to develop that into designing then the actual product and as quickly as possible. Like if you have an idea and then you develop that thing after two years or three years, it's obsolete. So the idea is that there are a lot of demands, there are a lot of things which are coming up very fast, the technology is developing very fast, especially in IT, in electronics, then how to develop those parts or products quickly? Like if somebody like I go there and I say, okay, if you make this thing on this one, probably I will go and buy it even if it is $100 more. So how to do it within two, three months or within a month and bring it to market? So there are a lot of things involved with that, a lot of things. So all these industries have done some studies and they found that if we can bring a new product, say within a month, then you are in the market. It's a very competitive market. And you are in the market, you can go globally and basically make profit. So we are moving in that direction. There are a lot of things related to manufacturing. It's not only metals, it is polymers, plastics, not only machining, but you can think about metal farming. Now this additive manufacturing has come up where you don't machine, but you add the material to make a parts, very complicated shapes very quickly. So there are a lot of things coming up in the research and development too. So our ultimate mission is to have a rapid response manufacturing. And for that, we are developing the center. And the goal is to have this center maybe within a year or two, having a lot of machine tools in that, a lot of automation possible. And with the help of our stakeholders and these companies, 
probably we are going to do that and we will be successful in this area. The goal is to bring this whole area you can see here as the world leader in the rapid response manufacturing that is the concept because first thing is we are the hub here the transportation is very good you can go any country very quickly and you can see here how everywhere we can be connected very fast. We are already having very good relationship with Japan with these companies sometimes they come like 20 suppliers for these Alps they come here in our department we show them everything here what we do and they are impressed and I think one or two are coming here starting their own business or some kind of like a office here. So that will bring some of the jobs probably and similarly with KAIST which is Korean Institute of Advanced Science and Technology even they are very much involved with us they come here every every at least two three times we are trying to see what we can do with them how can we bring some of the companies from there how can grow the research here in our labs. So in this area you can understand like because when I came here I always lived in the north like Canada 9 years and then 19 years in Ohio. So it was totally shocking first but now it is okay like, like you are making milk and like water together and after some time it is all homogeneous so I am there now and trying to see like I have been to meetings to Laredo, I have been to Brownsville thinking about SpaceX and talking to people, lot of industry people and then I am finding yes this is the right place to grow because if I know a lot and if I cannot implement that it is of no use like the knowledge will go with me. So now is the time for that so I am doing in that direction. So here you can see the whole rapid response manufacturing center without going into all the things the first thing we are trying right now within the next few months is to develop a tooling academy. We already have an additive manufacturing machine we bought actually a few months ago it like a it is very costly like few hundred thousand dollars like uh, and we bought it it is uh, and it is working we are doing lot of new testing on that making lot of complicated shapes on that with uh, trying to use titanium alloys, nickel based alloys, steels and to develop those kind of parts and the idea is to develop that tooling academy and in that tooling academy you can see here okay TMAC is already there it is called Texas Manufacturing Assistant Center it is basically funded by the NIST MEP program. So some funding comes from there and UTPA basically matches that fund and it is here means where I sit in that room that is a TMAC and rapid response manufacturing center on the other side of the sugar road and they are already doing all that they are training classes for Six Sigma, lean manufacturing and all those product life cycle it is temporary they all are doing it already. Now only thing is to develop that part so there we thought about that that maybe first we should have a tooling academy where we can train people we can have a workforce development we can go from very high level like a high school certification to up to PhD program if possible because we have only masters program here but we are trying for that if we can do that. And in this uh, tooling center which is basically that 30,000 square feet space we should get within a month and in that we are going to do all that like research and development for tooling some fabrication work because I have already ordered three different machines one is turning machine CNC turning CNC milling and one grinding CNC grinder. So we can see we can do a lot of testings we can have a test beds ready in our lab so that if some industries want some kind of testing they can come to us and we can do the testing. I have done that for a long time so I know exactly what the industries are looking for and how we can support them here in this area. So we are doing that fabrication and then maintenance and education and training. And you know STC is like they have also a uh, precision machining lab they are doing some kind of certification but they all are very supportive to this program here. And you can see here in that advanced tool engineering there is a lot of knowledge in different field needed like manufacturing is not a very simple thing but you know there are metrology, there are GDNT, there is the manufacturing, there is the designing, there are CAD CAM system there are a lot of things you have to understand. And even I, I don't know everything, I know only a part of that even if I spent 35, 40 years in that. So we need experts in that and we are trying to do that, bring people from all over to be a part of this tooling center and then use that to train people so that they can be a good tool and die fabrication skills and having some kind of certification so that they can get a better jobs and better economy in this area. So that is the idea we have in this program 
and this is we have already discussed a lot in our meetings and finally you can see here how STC, how UTPA they are going to work together at different level of certification means starting from a very low level of certification diploma and then going to master's degree and then the PhD degree program if possible. Now the other thing in rapid response manufacturing we have hired four we call RGV star professors really very talented and you know, I am one of them but I am not that talented <laughs> but there are people like we have one Dr. McClough he came from Egypt but he has done PhD from Germany and he was in the Planck Institute for a long time. He had a lot of books, lot of publications, lot of work in corrosion and coating technologies. Dr. Mataj is here who is working in the area of uh, cells like batteries and energy storage, trying to develop new efficient batteries and that kind of work he's doing. Then you can see here Dr. Choi, he's working in the area of biosensors, means that's amazing, means when I was listening to his presentation that how this can be very helpful to our military, especially people who have like a artificial limbs right now and controlled by the muscles. And with the biosensor, he's already successful up to certain level that whatever signal goes from your brain, that will be transferred to the muscles and then the muscles can basically control that artificial limb. Right now it is not there. So he's using MEMS and the sensors at the micro level, which can be put into your nervous system. And that's where they interact with your signals from the brain and can act and give directions for your movement or holding the thing and those things. So you can see that, and my area is very broad, means I don't know how to explain that, but anything related to manufacturing. Means I have worked in the area of sensor applications, I have worked in automation, I have worked a little bit on robotics, I have worked in the area of cutting, optimization. So with that broad experience in the industries, when I come here and teach classes, it's really, really good because I don't go only with some knowledge in the books, which is theoretical. I want to see what is the need of the industry. And based on that, I try to see how we can help. Because if you see all this Obama's program, NNMI, what they are doing is that they have shown that there is an area where a lot of academic research is going on. They call it MRL and TRL 1 to 4. And then there are TRL 6, like a technology readiness level or manufacturing readiness level. It's a defense words, DOD words. So you can see here is academic institutions and here is the industry and there's a big gap. So how to fill that and that's why there are a lot of new concepts have come and a lot of money has been spent by the federal government to develop those centers. Like one on entry manufacturing in Youngstown, then they have a digital manufacturing in Chicago now. They have a lightweight materials in Michigan with the Ohio State University now. And now they have just announced in DOE about a center on sensor applications, fusion of sensors, automation and those things just came as a white paper. So you can see here, the idea is that finally we have to see how we can grow economy in this area, which is called RGV, Rio Grande Valley. It is UTRGV from soon. Everything here looks very good and very, very, to be honest, very good actually. Means when I go and talk to people in the industry, like last week I was in Reynosa in Elcom, I was looking at everything like how much talent is needed in this field, local. Means they will hire immediately, they will give good jobs, but you, you should know exactly what you are supposed to do there. So our goal is to train those people at different level, going to that level and bring them up with our experiences and whatever we have learned in our life. So, that's the idea we have. I think that's what I want to do and I want to share with you. I don't know what time is left. <laughs> I can go on because <laughs> there are a lot of things, but I think 10 minutes over, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. If you have any questions, you can ask. I would like to open up the floor for any questions that you may have for him. Any questions? I have a question. Yeah. <clears throat> what, what can like our surrounding community here uh, do to support this? I know a lot of people don't know that we have this and even just the talent of professors and students, like what can communities do to foster this? Yeah, because see the problem right now is because I have to understand the whole system here. And like one year is not good enough for that. You see, I'm just one year and uh, I have learned a lot. I have made a lot of networking all over. 
like STC directors, I go there, talk to them. I have in Namri has a lot of like I think more than 60 industries involved with that. And we have quarterly meetings for that. We discuss about the things on that. And the member are from, from Laredo up to Brownsville. So basically whole committee is there. Recently we had discussion with uh, Mexico. Because Obama and Mexico's uh, prime minister, I think they had some kind of relationships about the technology development. So now the people from Mexico, they were here actually last week from FUMEC. And that's the biggest organization there for research and development. And they are also looking how can we grow economy and the technology in the area which is on the boundary. It's starting from San Diego and going up to Brownsville. So we had a really good, very good meeting actually. And there's another uh, center, it's called, uh, it's in actually, forget my this English because I don't know how to speak Spanish. <laughs> it's called Queretro. Queretro, yeah. So there were CEOs and a lot of directors, they came here to have a meeting with us. We had a really good meeting. And we are moving in that direction, actually, UTPA, University of Austin, and the centers in Mexico, which are doing a lot of research and development work. So only thing is, you are right, marketing and awareness, and it has to come. But there are ways, because, because you know, means the way I see, because in the industry when I see, for everything you need money. Without that, it's not easy, right? Only voluntary work, good, but it doesn't work all the time. Especially for developing all this technology. Like, if I have to do some testing, I need a machine. Even if I know what to do, but until I have all the sensors on that machine, I cannot measure anything. So, so it takes time for that. Like I'm trying to buy those machines for the last more than five months. There are sensors we have to put on the machine so that we can measure everything online, data acquisition systems, which is all electronics. There are a lot of things involved. But I'm pretty sure that soon the center will develop and grow very fast with the help of other industries in this area. That's my view. And then people will start knowing too. Because MEDC is involved, fully involved with us. They are helping us. Uh, they are very collaborative with us. Sometimes they guide us. Like we were in Japan in this uh, Alps. We invited by the chairman of that company. It's amazing. You won't believe. So, so I can see. And MEDC people were there. Keith and everybody was there. I was there. My dean was there to so discuss about that. So I, I see there is a support. But somebody has to do it. And I'm very happy that my dean is very supportive and he has a vision for it. So it will work. When I, when I don't speak Spanish, he's there. <laughs> so it's so good for me. Yeah, I'm just on the back and then he's. So, so it's very good actually. And on the other side, I'm teaching courses in manufacturing which have never been taught here, like advanced machining and those kind of courses, grinding. So it means you have just heard about those words, but you don't know about the technological deep, like how deep this whole subject is. Like in grinding area, I have worked for 35 years. But still, I will say I don't know everything. It means there are so many things which are coming up. There are so many things which need a lot of research. But there's no end, to be honest. But when I see here the young generation and, and see the potential, there is a potential. Like in, in the class, in my class, there are some people from here and just trying to see how they do and how, how I can really like, give them some knowledge which may be helpful for them in the like, near future, not like after 10 years. Just now after that, the classes. So it will come. When do you will have the center ready to work? The way I heard from our dean, because you know it's a system. So we moved a paper, we saw that area, we liked it. It went to the UT system in Austin, came back now. It's here, so it has been approved. It's approved already? Yes. Okay, you have already machines, not yet? Not yet. Okay. Yeah, it's already, quotations are ready with the supplier. Everything is like talked about. Uh, the sensors, which are very costly, like each sensor, it costs like $50,000, one sensor on the machine. I need like three sensors on that, which are around $100,000 roughly with all the electronics. All those things, you need money. So, uh, so I have some money for all those things. I am developing. We are developing. It means actually we all the four professors, we have some money to develop each technology. And I think after you have already the technology here, you will begin to fight with the systems. Because 
The maquiladora industry began in the 1960s. Okay? And from 1960s to right now, you don't find workshops for tools in on all the border. That's what I realized. With the maquilador in the 80s. Yeah. And I was tired to convince, try to convince people to, to, to have workshops for tools on the border. And really, it's very, very tough. It's so coming. It's coming. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I mean, I think. It's a challenge, yes, so I agree. The first thing is that you, you need to have your machines, your <coughs> center, and begin to work. You're right, there is here a lot of young guys, a lot of young people, very enthusiastic. Here, the, the Panam is a very, it's a very good institution to go with the, with the, with the guys in the, in the technology. Uh, yeah, it will. And not too much people know here. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm wondering about that because when I came here, everybody talks about manufacturing. I'm an SME board member, the Society of Manufacturing Engineers for the whole USA. When I, when I talk there in our committees, because we sometimes give ideas to the Obama administration, there through our things what we are looking in US industry. So like advanced manufacturing, and that's a main focus for Obama administration in the last few years. So one by one, he's taking those steps, going in one direction, like electronics, then digital manufacturing, then additive manufacturing, then uh, composite materials, and he's developing those centers with, with the support and then the support from the industry. Like he will give you $50 million, and then he wants matching from the industry $100, $100 million. So that's where it's growing. And I'm a part of a lot of those things, and that brings some really good networking for us with the people like that. The starting, yeah. right now we have, I don't know how much money they got from the, what you call ED, EDA, like it's called Economical Development Funding or something. They have already some money, few million dollars. No, 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 it's more than that. It's few million, I don't know how much exact. I don't want to give wrong number, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, I, and uh, like we can, we can uh, have that facility for five years, I think, with that funding, and then we have to be self-sustained. So I think that's enough time. Yes. I'm trying to get some funding from the federal government, a few million dollars. So it takes time, like, uh, yeah. So but my question yeah. about the changes in ETRGV. Mm -hmm. I know that they're funding the school more. Is the College of Engineering starting to see doors start to open? Yes. That you guys can start tooling yourselves? Because I know that <coughs> in San Antonio, they're getting really into MEMS, right? Microelectrical mechanical mm -hmm. systems. I know personally I'd be interested in doing sensor manufacturing down here. Do it for me. I will just be very happy because <laughs> I work in most of the sensor you think about. Acoustic emission, vibrations, force, uh, torque sensors, uh, power sensor, everything we work. Yeah. Because our machines need to be sensor fusion on that machine to collect all the data online, to analyze the problems, to optimize the process. I have done a lot of work with like Lockheed Martin or GE Aviations, uh, Boeing. I have done a lot of work with those people in, in increasing their productivity. Because every day you will have a new material coming up, like composite material, CFRP, carbon fiber reinforced plastic. They are using on this 787 Dreamliner and that 310 Airbus. There are a lot of issues. So on one side, there are a lot of development in the material. There are a lot of issues with machining, how to machine it properly. And there are a lot of issues with the mechanical properties how to make that homogeneous properties. So all that research we will do in our lab. Like on one side, we will support the industries, try to develop workforce, and at the same time, we will do our own research and development. Miss, I was involved with our research and development for around, around 25 years now, because whatever I was doing, on the side I was doing research, that's why I have more than, I think, 60 publications in the international journals, though I was in the industry which is not easy to be honest. Yeah, in all the big journals, very famous, all reviewed. So, so that's how it works, like you have to work hard and very focused. So everything starts working properly, smoothly. And I know the way he's telling there are hurdles, no doubt, but we can do it coolly. Yeah, I don't think there is an issue with that. Uh, UTVs, uh, 
the Stargate program? UTB? Well, I, I know that uh, UTB, well, I guess now it's going to be UTRGB, but um, SpaceX specifically partnered with UTB this past year to develop an incubator that accelerates aerospace based startups mm -hmm. um, in Boca Chica Beach. Um, is the manufacturing center going to have any part of that, like helping prototype their technologies? Or I think 100% because first thing is UTB is not anymore after August probably. All the faculties there have been already been a part of UTRGV. Even in the manufacturing technology, there is only one faculty. Now he has been taken as a part of our department here, who works in robotics and mist cooling and MQL systems. I have seen their lab, they, they have rented that actually in the building. But, and, and at the same time, we have also submitted a proposal with UTB for the SpaceX to NASA from the UT, UTPA. So there are a team from the, I think, two or three faculties from UTB, and some are from here, and our president, Havidan, they all are the part of that. So yeah, it will be very harmonious with UTB. I don't see any problem. Because right now, I think it's being supervised by the physics department. Yeah, exactly. And I spoke to Dr. Gonzalez about it, and he was like, you know, aerospace technology should be more engineering oriented <laughs> than physics. Yeah. I mean, there is physics, obviously. No, the problem is not about that. Problem is that there are certain issues, like the, I, I can tell you a little bit, not much, that, that I mean, there are some faculties who are really working the gravitational things in the space, right? And some faculties are really very good in that, and even from San Antonio. So, so when NASA is giving some funding, the idea was that how to attract that and what kind of research we can do here. So that was the focus. But the problem is, when SpaceX comes, what Miguel Gonzalez says is that they are not looking for people from physics only. They are looking for people from materials, manufacturing, mechanical engineering, fluid dynamics, aerodynamics. So means there are a lot of things in engineering. So, so that's the way he feels. I, and he's right, actually. He's right. But, but you cannot avoid physics, too. You cannot avoid chemistry. You cannot avoid anything. Like when you go to materials, it's all physics and chemistry. So how can you avoid it? it the, it's your perception, to be honest, like how you see it. Are there any more questions? OK. Well, thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot to you all. Yeah.